My name is Jake Carello, my major is history and I tend to graduate in 2017. I came here my senior year for um, just touring schools like everybody does, but I was special needs. So I was looking at all these state schools and they wouldn't, they don't really accommodate my special needs. So when I came to Albertus and they described the whole process of how to get uh, help, it was, it was so easy and transparent that it just wasn't even an issue. I didn't need any doctor notes. I just had to talk to Dr. Vertini and sign it. And it was, mm -hmm. it was really nice. This was way later down the line. Like it was probably like sophomore to junior year down the line. I was just taking history courses because I had always had an interest in history. And then when it came time to clear my major, I was like, why not go to history? Do something you like. And originally my minor was going to be politics. Then I tried business and I was like, no. So then <laughs> I did communications because I took a couple classes with Ron's and I'd get A's in them. So I was like, might be good at communications. Let's give it a shot. And that's where I fell into there too because apparently I love to communicate to people. <laughs> Probably the most passionate thing about my life is service. And it's just something I didn't even know I was passionate about because as a Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, your main thing was service. We always did community service and I always had fun doing community service. So from five years old, I was cleaning up parks and doing whatever they had you do as Cub Scouts and it just kept on continuing. So it was nice finding a school that had a, one of its pillars was service. And that's what I kind of fell into. And especially with my last, my senior year, last semester, I was able to do a service project by myself, which was Toys for, Al for Alfredo's fans. And I was able to raise 800 toys for the 800th year of the Dominican tradition. So the kids who uh, needed a present to open up on Christmas time in the cancer hospital, 800 kids were able to open up a Christmas present during that time. So it was a really magical and nice experience. And it was nice for the nurses too and everybody there because they didn't expect to get that many carloads full of, of gear from a student. So it was, really, it was a really cool experience. I loved it. The, the club that we started is called Males. It's called Men Achieving Leadership and Service. And the big part about the club is service, of course, but it's also about teaching men to be more gentlemanlike. But one of our major things is service, and we do a lot of service events. We just, last semester, partnered with St. Martin's, and so we do a tutoring event for them, and we help, and we tutor kids, and we teach, we try to teach them anything that they need help on. So it's really nice, because we're giving back to the community they love us for, and we do a couple events for the Dominican sisters when they need help. So that's really cool. While I've been here at Albertus, I've been in a bunch of clubs and activities. I've been on SAA, Males, the Tour Guide, the Presidential Screening Committee, the Commuter Club, and, oh, Peace Leadership. I've been in that too. So it's just, I've been in a bunch of clubs and everything around campus. I'm in almost everything but SGA. That was the only thing I wasn't in, but that's, that's mainly what I do. So I'm around campus 24-7. It's like I practically live here. That was actually a very interesting role that I had to go into, um, basically for picking the new president of Albertus Magnus College. I was the probably the first student representative that they picked. So it was me and then the rest of the board of trustee members that were on there. So it was a really weird feel when I first started. I was like, wow, these people are really advanced to me, they're, they're older, they're smarter, they have connections and they're high up in the corporate ladder and I was like, well, how the heck do I fit in this, in this scenario? But I was able to work through it and I built these magnificent connections with these trustee members and we were able to work together. So it was a really cool experience reading all those resumes and finding out who's applying for the job and then interviewing the people. So it was a really cool experience. Whew. It would have to be um, my dad, my tutor and my martial arts instructor. So those were the three people that actually inspired me to be who I wanted to be. When I was diagnosed with my learning disability, I was very frustrated because I couldn't read until the fifth grade. So everything I had to learn was extremely difficult. Everything was hard and it was just, it was frustrating as a child when you're sitting in your classroom and everybody else is flipping through the books and they can read and you're looking at this piece of paper and you're like, I can't understand what this is. I don't know what the words are. So when people, when people kind of say, well, how can you not read and this, that, and the third, and they go to third world countries and they can't grasp the concept of not knowing to read, I have, I guess, the blessed opportunity of knowing what it feels like not being able to read the frustration 
of just looking at the words and they're just meaningless to you. They mean nothing. So he was, he sat me down and he realized the troubles that I had with it and he said, listen, when you're going through life, you have to work hard. It's not an option. Quitting is not an option. You have to work hard in life. There's just, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're just lucky enough to learn the lesson early and this will carry you through your entire life. So that, that really helped me out and my tutor was actually instrumental in my education career. Without her, I probably wouldn't be here. And then my martial arts instructor was actually really, really up there when it comes to helping me out. Because as I was going through that, um, they also told me I was never gonna graduate high school. They told me I was gonna never make it through college. And so that spirit of not giving up actually drives me and what still drives me today is to never give up because it's not worth giving up. You better try than fail than to never try at all. It had to be my first day of class when the teacher sat down and actually took times to know your names and keep and commit your main names to memory and they just worked with you one-on-one -on -one with everything. That was, that was the real kind of eye-opening where they gave you your office hours. They told you, you can contact me anytime you want. Your cell phone, doesn't, it doesn't matter. We'll always be there for you. We are here to help you succeed. You may feel that you're up above your head, but that's the point. But we'll never let you drown unless you want to drown. If you want to succeed, we will help you succeed. And that's what I liked about it was they were there to help you, but they also let you fight for it. And that was... That was really good. That's, that's what made me love it and still love it to this day. Get more involved. Get, start getting involved early. <laughs> and don't be afraid to find, to found new clubs. It's not a fear. And to get over the fear of talking and meeting to new people because it's, it's not a bad one. And just keep moving forward. Never give up because it's not worth it. Well, I tell them, welcome to Albertus Magnus. This is the last stop you're going to ever need throughout all your college applications. This is the place where you need to go. This is a place where you will make friends, connections, and meet people that you'll never meet anywhere at big campuses. This is the place where family is truly the bond. Family is what brings us all here from different generations, from different times. This is the true place where family really matters, and so does service and community. We are the school that really does follow the four pillars as best as we can, and this is the only place where you'll see that. This is a gem. My plans now is to get my master's in leadership. Well, that's gonna be a big picture, but my, my real goal is to be um, senator. So I'll try to run for senator in Connecticut or even governor. That's, that's the real goal in seven years, to try and run for office. And then in the long run, 10 years out from that, is to actually try to run for president of the United States. So that's always, that's always been a dream since I was little and people used to make fun of me for it, but that's, that's still the goal is to try to run for president. That's, that's my goal and I hope I accomplish that.